Let's say on this index page, we want to show the total number of books which we have and also the average rating. How could we do that? Well, thankfully, Django makes this very easy because it has something which is called aggregation methods. It has built-in methods which you can use on your models to aggregate results. And that's what I'll do here in viewsPy in the index function. Now I don't just want to pass the books to the template, but also the total number of books, let's say, and also the average rating. These two fields should be added here. And to get them, we can again use queries and special methods offered by Django. We already query for all the books here, and therefore I now can use my books query set you learned earlier that you don't want to repeat queries unnecessarily for performance. So we don't want to run book objects all again. That would be bad because that would create two query sets and potentially hit the database twice. But instead we can use the existing books query set to then kind of get aggregate data out of it. If we want to get the number of books, for example, there is a count method which we can simply call. And then we have the number of books which we can store in a separate variable and then assign as a value to this context key here. And there also is an aggregation method for the average. If we want to get our average rating here, we can access books and then call the aggregate method, which is a more general method that allows us to run different aggregation methods. And now we just need to import from Django DB models the AVG for average class. And there are other classes as well which you could import. For example, there is max and min if you would want to find the total, the overall maximum for a given column or the minimum. But I want to use average and then here to aggregate, to books.aggregate, you construct average, you instantiate this average class, and as a value, you now pass the field for which you want to build the average. So in my case, I want to build the average on the rating field, so you simply pass rating to average. And this instructs Django to go ahead, have a look at all the books in that query set, and build the average for the rating field and then return that average here and in this case store it in the average rating variable. And then it's average rating which I also pass or which I set as a value for this context key. And now in the template, in index.html, we can of course output that. Below the unordered list we can have a horizontal line and then simply say total number of books and interpolate our total number of books. So this key here, that's what I use as a variable. And then we can also add another paragraph where we say average rating and interpolate average rating. So that other context key which we set. And with that, if we save that and reload, that's what we see. Now you see for the average rating, you actually get back um, a dictionary, which has rating underscore underscore average as a key, which then holds the result. And therefore here we should actually access this and access rating underscore underscore average with the dot notation here to get the concrete value and the reason for that is simply that when calling the aggregate function, the aggregate method as we're doing it here, you could pass in multiple aggregation methods. So besides constructing the average, you could also get the min. And you would get back a dictionary where your different aggregation methods are then grouped by key. So for the average on rating, you have rating underscore average. If you also had like min on rating in there, then you would also have rating underscore underscore min in there. 
and so on. That's why you get this extra dictionary, because you could have multiple aggregation steps grouped together. Here it's just the average on the rating, hence we'll only have the rating underscore underscore average key in the dictionary. But that's another useful feature, which allows you to get extra metadata about your data in the database. Now, last but not least, you also sometimes want to sort. And sorting is also very simple with Django. Whenever you build a query set, like here with all, but the same would be true if you used filter, you can also call order by on the query set. And that does what the name implies. It allows you to order the results in the query set. And it will do the ordering on the database level. So it will query for the ordered data and not get the unordered data and then order in Python, but instead it queries for the ordered data so that Python doesn't need to do the ordering at all. But everything is done behind the scenes. You just need to specify by which column, by which field you want to order. And you can also order by multiple fields if you want to. But here we could say that we want to order by title, by specifying title here like this. And if we now reload, you see Harry Potter is first. By default, it orders in an ascending order. You could also order in a descending order simply by adding a minus in front of the field name. So minus title orders by title in a descending order. So if we save that and reload, now it's ordered like this. And of course, we can also order by rating in a descending order. So with minus rating, we make sure that the highest rating is on top and the lowest rating is at the bottom. And these are various nice functionalities which you can easily add, as you can tell, with help of Django and its models.